The ongoing delay in announcing the price of premium motor spirit PMS produced by Dangote Petroleum Refinery DRL has sparked growing concerns among oil marketers, with the landing cost of imported petrol now hovering around 1,120 now per litre, the uncertainty surrounding Dangote's pricing has intensified discussions on fuel importation. As stakeholders await Dangote's price announcement, the implications for fuel availability, competition and the future of Nigeria's oil sector remain under scrutiny. Olufemi, Oladeng, senior partner, Argentil Capital Partners, joins me for this. Thank you, Mr. Oladeng, for joining me today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure of being on your show as usual. Thank you. Same here. Now, let's begin by clarifying what a deregulated environment should look like and what each party should be doing. Hmm. <laughs> I like that question, Professor. So, here it is. Um, in a deregulated environment, what should happen is that um, producers are able to produce um, or importers are able to import and sell at a price that is determined by the market. Um, in, and in a regulated environment, what happens is that you then have a regulator who is able to ensure some level of market stability. Um, what, of course, we have today is because the pricing element of that deregulated market um, has not been resolved. So what you have is a, what I would probably describe as a disconnected market. So a market where pricing um, of the product is not determined by the market, um, but there's the invisible hand of the government still trying to maintain prices um, at a particular level. So whilst we can say that the Nigerian market is supposedly deregulated, um, the reality is that pricing is still being regulated um, surreptitiously um, by the NNPC, which is the largest importer of products um, into the market. Well, to what end is this really? If we're talking about a deregulated space on the one hand, NNPC is telling us that it's, it's, short, of, it's short on cash, and then, you know, why are we still doing all of this? Can't we just clarify and get things better or done with? So, so, look, you, you have to understand the government's dilemma. Um, at the time when the president came out in March 20, on March 29th, I'm sorry, May 29th last year, and said deregulation was gone, the market dynamics are completely different from where they are today. At the time when he made that pronouncement, landing cost of petrol in Nigeria around that time was probably about 500 naira, 550 naira. Um, so it was okay for him to make that pronouncement, move prices from 190 um, 180 there about to 600 or to 518 naira. That was the first price change. Now the difference is within that period and today we've seen a significant devaluation of the currency, which is the biggest contributor to the current movement in prices. The naira has gone from about 700 naira per liter per, per, per dollar um, to 1,600, 1,700 and in today's prices. So that means that if you just used um, the same ratio between where prices were when the naira was about 700 naira to a dollar and where prices are today, um, then intuitively our prices should be around the 1,200, 1,250 level. Um, and that is where the biggest problem has come from. Now, unfortunately, the government has allowed the currency to um, also, you know, um, start to find its own level through market forces. You've got now got a variable that the government does not have control over. Well, literally two variables that the government doesn't have control over, the price of um, petrol in the open market, and of course the exchange rate at which you're converting that price into the local currency. So when you have that situation, it's obvious that government has elements that it can't control um, because it's left it to the market forces. So what the government is now trying to do is to modulate prices or to keep prices at a particular level artificially, and the only way they can do okay. that Mr. Olade, I'm sorry I have to butt in here. Thank you. I'm sorry I have to butt in here. We're going on a very quick break. When we'll come back, we'll continue from there. Stay with us. Glad to know you stay with us. And of course, we're looking at the dynamics of PMS pricing in Nigeria. Olufemi Olade, senior partner, Gentle Partners, is my guest. Thank you once again for staying with us. All right, so before we went on that timeout, you were talking about two variables that the 
government can actually not control. So while we're on that, I also want to chip this in. Uh, what do you make of this situation? I mean, we're in, in a situation where the government still wants to have some level of control. What is the implication of this for producers? I mean, local producers, manufacturers, uh, not necessarily manufacturers, refiners now. So look, I mean, it, it shouldn't really matter if the government, the government just has to be transparent with Nigerians. And that's one of the things we've always talked about um, on, on your show and on several other platforms. The government just needs to be transparent. The transparency that's required is that if the government wants to maintain prices at a particular point, it should be clear that that's its intention. Well, you know, my so question really, my concern is if government wants to do this, what happens to other persons who want to stay on, you know, market forces? And then the government is saying, I'm not buying off from you. Doesn't that put them at a disadvantage? So, so what, what needs to happen is if the government fixes a price at which it wants to sell, that price, honestly, if, if the government insists on fixing a price at which petrol should be sold, that has completely nothing to do with the cost of petrol. The government is making the decision that they're going, they going to be responsible for the difference between the market price and the price at which they want to sell. They just have to be transparent to Nigerians that that's what they want to do. You know, today, prices are currently at about 900 naira. We know that as data has shown, and, and as you alluded to at the beginning of the show, that landing costs today are about 1,120, 1,150. So it means that even in the current environment, there is a differential that somebody is writing a check for. We know that the government is the one writing that check. So look, the fact that they're trying to get into a price um, agreement with Dangote, it honestly does not mean anything. What will happen is that Dangote should name the price at which he's selling his PMS, and then the government can decide if it's going to allow the market to buy from Dangote at that price, or if it's going to be the buyer of first resort and sell to, to marketers at a different price. And honestly, Nigerians should be completely indifferent as to whether Dangote is able to sell to all the marketers or not. As long as there is transparency around the cost of petrol and how much it's been sold for, and it's also very clear who is paying for that differential, then we should be fine. You know, well, uh, what, what about a situation happened? where a situation where NNPC keeps, you know, using the dividend meant for the federation, using it to settle, you know, these other differentials? Is that also a good situation? Look, at the end of the day, it's the government's money, right? Um, the government can decide what it wants. And then the government keeps taxing us and levying us. Well, well, look, at the end of the day, um, so there's something that I said, um, you know, on, on, on one of your shows, and that is that the Nigerian government is, is at a stage whereby, in Naira terms, we keep announcing these huge jumps in revenue. But in real terms, our revenues are worse than they were 20 years ago. So that is where the problem is. And our population has grown by 100% during those 20-year periods. But remember that when we did the last census, they told us we were 180 million Nigerians. Today, by estimates, there are over 200 million Nigerians. So the Nigerian population has grown by over 100%. But our, our economy, in real terms, has actually shrunken back to the levels of um, the Obasanjo, during the Obasanjo years. So the, the truth is that Nigeria is not as rich as we think it is. So if the NNPC is not selling petrol at a particular price, somebody has to pay for it. The reality is that the average Nigerians are paying for it either from their pockets or from the revenues of government. And that is where the issue is. And that's why we keep talking about transparency. Let it be clear to Nigerians that there is a subsidy being paid and this is how the subsidy is being funded. The problem is the government has come out and said there is no subsidy. Of course, there is, you know, you can call it whatever name you like. When you are selling something at a price that is lower than what you bought it for, you are making a loss. And somebody must be paying for that loss. You know, in economics, one plus one is always equal to two. There is no, there is no, there is no magic that can happen in that box. And, and what we are ha okay. having here is that petrol is, the market price for petrol today is 1,200 naira. The Nigerian government is selling at 850 naira, 900 naira. There is a differential of 300 naira as of today. That 300 naira is being paid by the NNPC, whether the government accepts it or not. And that is the reason why the NNPC has now run out of cash 
to be able to support its operations. So look, the truth is, the, the, the biggest thing that we are owed as Nigerians right now is transparency around the market. Okay. Transparency around the true cost of petrol, and let's be clear on who is paying for it. Now, if the government wants to transfer that cost to Nigerians, then it has to do so, and it has to do it in a transparent manner. And that is what is missing at this point in this conversation we are having, is the transparency. Okay, so I'll just put two questions in one, and I hope that you'll be able to answer in a minute or less. The landing cost of imported PMS, just like you also alluded to, is 1,120 naira. Do you see PMS from DRL, that's Dangote, you know, at a cheaper price? That's one. And then number two, we are also looking at, you know, uh, the conversation around NNPC being or not being Dangote's sole off taker. I mean, what do you make of that? What's the position of the law? Is any law being broken by NNPC's refusal? Or so, otherwise. So your first question around the cost of Dangote's petrol. Look, there are certain cost elements that come into imported petrol that would not be relevant to Dangote's refinery. So the cost of transportation, the cost of vessels, and all of that would not be part of it. So you can see almost like a hundred naira, between a hundred naira um, cost savings that comes from buying from a local refinery. So that is one. The second element of your question is around you know, why the NNPC is the only buyer from, from Dangote's refinery. That is the, the reason why that is true is simply because no one else is going to buy from Dangote and sell at a loss. The NNPC today are selling at a loss. There's no businessman that's going to love Nigeria so much as to go and buy petrol for 1,200 and want to sell it at 900 naira. So that is the reason why the NNPC is the only one who can buy from Dangote at this time. And trust me, Dangote is not going to sell petrol to the NNPC at a price that is lower than the market price. So somebody is still going to be paying a subsidy. All right, I think that sort of settles our conversation for today. Thank you so much for your time on the show, Olufemi Olade, Senior Partner, Adental Capital Partners. Thank you.